Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. A very happy Friday to all of you, and I hope you all had a wonderful Thanksgiving. So a quick shout out to my newest patrons, Michelle G, Dave S, and I believe this is a Polish name, so Wojciechowski. <laughs> hope that's somewhat close. It was actually funny. He put, looking forward to how you read it in the note with his patron subscription. So thank you all for the support, and that little comment made my day, Wojciechowski, so thank you. First up today, we have to talk about is Lucid Alliance. So in my most recent episode, we talked about Tom Malogny's charging video. Most of you have probably seen that. If not, go ahead and check it out. But I want to touch on this comment first from Robert. The Lucid charging to 100% showed that their battery is at least 134 kilowatt hours. They claim 118 kilowatt hours wrong. So Robert, with all due respect, I just want to say the conversation is much more nuanced than this. And I'm not highlighting this to like call you out, but 140 people liked it, so there's apparently a lot of people that think this is the case, so I think it's really important that we clear this up. So just to get you guys caught up, um, Warren Redlick did this video, Lucid Lie, Battery Scam Exposed, basically because as you can see on the screen from the Electrify America DC fast charging, there were 134 kilowatt hours that were actually sent from the charger and Lucid had told Tom Malogny, who did this review, that the battery pack size was 118 kilowatt hours. So many people are wondering, Warren included, how can you receive 134 kilowatt hours of charge if your pack is only 118 kilowatt hours? And many people think the actual size of the Lucid Air Dream Edition pack is between 135 and 140 kilowatt hours. And they're saying that Lucid is basically lying about the pack size to have the best efficiency on the market. So let's take a look. And as always, just to be clear, I don't have anything against any of these people who I'm mentioning or anything that's being said. For me, it's just all about the data. People are sharing data, commenting on it. And for me, I just want to get to the truth as always. So nothing against Warren, nothing against Robert. Let's continue. But what I do want to say is for Warren to say that Lucid is a scam or a fraud with the information that we all have available at the moment, I do think that is a bit of a stretch and a bit reckless in my opinion. Could he turn out to be right? Sure. I'm, I can't predict the future. But at this point, based on the info, I just think it's a bit much. So why might Lucid actually lie about this? I think it would be a terrible decision. However, just stick with me. Currently, the Model S long range, depending on the wheels, if you get the 19 inch wheels, has a range of 405 miles, a pack size of 100 kilowatt hours. So if you do the math, that gives you 4.05 miles per kilowatt hour. This is a very basic efficiency metric. Now let's compare that to the Lucid Air Dream. So hypothetically, if the pack size is 118 kilowatt hours, like Lucid and Tom are reporting, that means with 520 miles of range, that gives you an efficiency metric of 4.5 one miles per kilowatt hour, which would indeed be significantly better than Tesla. Now, if you're in the camp that believe the pack size is 135 to 140 kilowatt hours, we'll say 138, do the same math, that gives you 3.77 miles per kilowatt hour, which would indeed be lower than Tesla's 4.05. So if they are indeed lying just to have this metric be better than Tesla's, that's one argument. But then the question becomes, well, where are they getting this 138 kilowatt hour figure? There's a lot of different ways. One is the 134 kilowatt hours that was shown on the screen, but there's actually more to it. There's another calculation that people are doing and it is this one. So from the official EPA website, we get these figures. The Tesla Model S long range, the most recent, 28 kilowatt hours per 100 miles. So you have to use 28 kilowatt hours of energy to go 100 miles. And the Lucid Air Dream Edition has 27 kilowatt hours per 100 miles. But doing the Tesla math, if you simply divide the ratio, that gives you a kilowatt hour per mile of 0.28. Then if you take 0.28 and multiply it by the range of the Tesla vehicle, that would lead to a pack size of 113.4 kilowatt hours. Now we already know that the Tesla battery pack size is what? 100 kilowatt hours. So doing this back of the napkin reverse engineering math gives us an inflated pack size number. You have to remember that. So if we do that exact same math for Lucid with the EPA figures times the 520 miles of range, that would lead to a pack size of 140.4 kilowatt hours. And so this is the math that some people are arguing shows that Lucid has a pack size of 140, but I'm showing you this to be clear that this is not a good way. This reverse engineering does not give you an accurate pack size because doing it for the Model S 
does not make sense. It leads to 113 when the actual pack size is 100. So this is not a great argument, but there's more. So in Warren's video, he referenced this car and driver report, which historically has definitely been, we'll say not the most accurate when it comes to charging and stuff, but that's for another video. Anyway, DC fast charging cuts out the AC to DC conversion losses and is more efficient still. According to data from their Model 3, it's averaging 99% efficiency at our most frequented local supercharger, which operates at 400 volts, although it's not possible to independently verify that figure. At other fast chargers, we've seen efficiency figures above 90%. So what's happening is people are taking this paragraph to say that all DC fast charging, not just superchargers, but all DC fast charging should be 99% efficient this is just not accurate. There's a lot more as mentioned that goes into it, but to try to keep it simple for this video, Tesla's actually display the energy that the pack receives and not the energy that the charger sent like most of the other charging stations. So that 99% efficiency metric is not actually accounting for charging losses that were experienced with Tesla. And just to prove it to you, here is an official EPA report. This is directly from Tesla. It's their certification summary info report for the Model S Plaid 2021 version. The recharge event energy in kilowatt hours was 116. This is saying that they used 116 kilowatt hours of charge to recharge the battery pack. So that reiterates that even for Tesla, they have fast charging or DC fast charging losses, just like everybody else. So industry-wide, generally speaking, most charging is about 90% efficient, meaning the actual energy that's going from the charger into your battery pack, meaning you have roughly 10% of that energy being wasted or lost. So if Lucid's pack was actually 118 kilowatt hours, that would just mean that in this one test, but remember this was one test on one charger, that it would be about 13.5% inefficient, which is well within reason of the industry averages. And one other thing that gets overlooked, I think is yes, higher charging rates lead to more heat and more inefficiencies, more energy loss. However, this also means more battery cooling is necessary during the charge to keep the battery pack in a certain temperature range. This indeed uses energy. So that's another part of the energy loss equation that a lot of people don't talk about. And this last point is just me, but look, I've watched a lot of charging videos, Electrify America, Tesla over the years, and I'll just say, I'm not personally confident that any of the figures displayed on the charging screens, especially at Electrify America, I'm not confident they're always going to be perfectly accurate, you know, within plus or minus one kilowatt hour. I think it's possible that if you took that same Lucid and did the same test again on the same charger, you might get a figure of 130 kilowatt hours that were sent, or it could be 138 kilowatt hours. I'm just not sold that all of the data being displayed by these machines is like perfectly dead on accurate every time. So I think we need to have a little wiggle room there as well. And so to wrap this section up, I just wanna remind you guys that this is actually a far more nuanced conversation than the things I just laid out. There's things like peak voltage rates and amp hours and thermodynamics and inefficiencies and things that we didn't even touch on in this brief segment. So what I'm getting at is, do I think that Lucid is a scam or a fraud? No, not yet. Is it possible? Sure. But at this point, I'm just saying, I think it's at least possible Lucid does indeed have a 118 kilowatt hour pack given the charging inefficiencies and inaccurate readings and flawed mathematical calculations that people are using to disprove that figure. And I do like to give people the benefit of the doubt until they give you factual information that you are proven wrong. So I'm choosing to do that here with Lucid. Yes, I could absolutely be wrong. I just think at this point, we don't have enough information to know for sure. We really need Sandy Monroe to grab one of these Lucids and tear it down and give us some official figures. Hopefully we'll get that here sometime soon and we can put all of this to bed. But for Lucid to lie about something like this at this point would be very disheartening, incredibly reckless. Like why would you blow up your the future perception of your country for a small efficiency increase when in the grand scheme of things, it's not that big of a deal. So hopefully you guys maybe learned a thing or two. If nothing else, I hope it adds a little bit more nuance to the conversation rather than 134 kilowatts out, 118 bigger, smaller, wrong. You know, that's 
It's just not great analysis. Anyway, moving on. So as you can see, the Model Y performance is now being delivered in Shanghai. So that is great news, but there's more. The new infotainment system, as you'll see from the screenshot, these vehicles now have AMD's Ryzen processors and they're saying AMD GPUs, but I'm not sure we can confirm that at this point. However, taking a look at the screenshot, we do see AMD Ryzen chip for this vehicle, which will, or at least should be in theory, a big improvement over the previous Intel Atom processors for the Model 3 and Y. In the future, maybe next week, I'd like to do a deep dive on these chips to give you some more background. At this point though, it's just important to know that the Intel Atom processors are a little bit laggy. Some people report, you know, when you use the infotainment system, it's just a little slow. It uses more energy, so these new chips should be more efficient faster interaction with the UI and using less energy. So fingers crossed that this will come to the United States. Here is just a simple anecdote of somebody using the new Model Y performance with the new chip. As you can see, at least from this five second clip, it looks pretty snappy and quick. And some people are unofficially calling this the MCU3. It would be a logical progression up from MCU2. But as mentioned, we have to wait and see if we get this in the United States. And then people are asking about retrofits. Who knows, only time will tell. It would be nice if Tesla offers it in the future as this would be a big upgrade for a lot of people. And sticking with Giga Shanghai, we are getting reports that it will be expanding. Tesla set to spend $188 million to expand the factory, looking to add 4,000 new staff, taking the total number of people the plant can employ to 19,000. There will be no change to the models the factory currently produces, according to the filing, which also did not specify how much production capacity will be increased. So at this point, there's not a ton of information out there, but 42 How adds that it looks like this expansion is set to be completed by April, 2022. And in case you have it like that, Tesla is now offering a Model S Plaid carbon ceramic brake kit for $20,000 available by mid 2022, but there's more to the story. So this was shared on Reddit. The Model S Plaid going 200 miles per hour now requires paid hardware upgrades modified on Tesla's website. It used to say indicated Plaid top speed required proper wheels and tires, which will be available basically around now. And just to share with you guys why some people are upset. So weren't people promised the speed when buying the car? It was advertised as possible and sold with those numbers listed. Now they want you to pay more so you can actually get that top speed that you thought you already paid for. And then this user goes on to say how it's shady and you know basically false advertising. But in case you're interested in this stuff, one user says, pretty sure that like Porsche, these are rebranded Brembo carbon ceramics, perhaps some OEM specific design elements and requirements for Tesla. This is not a volume product. 20,000 is about what you'd pay to replace PCCB on a Porsche. Porsche owners typically get PCCB for street use, no brake dust, whereas it's too expensive to replace for track use. Life of rotors and pads are significantly diminished due to track use. Now, this might be an unpopular take, but giving just anybody the ability to go 200 miles an hour outside of a track environment, it just seems completely unnecessary and reckless. I don't understand it. Now, sure, on a track use with supervision and in a professional setting, you know, do whatever you want, but just to give everyday people access to this on the street who can definitely misuse it just seems not necessary, but that's just me. And in case you missed it over the holiday, Jay Leno had some more comments on Tesla saying they are probably eight to 10 years ahead in battery tech. They deserve their valuation because they are that much more ahead. I have one of the Tesla Plaids. It's the fastest accelerating vehicle on the planet. I have linked this video below if you missed it and you'd like to check it out. Here we have a cat and mouse game going on between Tesla and buyers. Some have been delaying their orders for over six months for myriad reasons, not the least of which is the potential EV tax credit that is possibly coming next year. Tesla, because of this, decided to send an ultimatum to buyers who have been delaying deliveries. Or what? Well, Tesla will cancel their order. And this applies to people who have been delaying deliveries for six months or more and applies to a number of orders in the low thousands in the United States. And it's a cat and mouse game with uncertainty because if these buyers do indeed keep delaying and then in this case have their order canceled, they're gonna have to place it again at potentially higher prices, whether it's now or into next year. But here's the email from Tesla and it says, if your order remains on hold December 2nd, 2021, or if your order is placed on hold again, your order will be automatically 
automatically canceled and your order deposit fully refunded. As mentioned, this is just for people who have already been delaying for over six months. Here we have some interesting news out of Giga Berlin. Tesla is reportedly not going to take advantage of a possible $1.1 billion Euro government subsidy for the planned battery production in Grunheide. This makes it clear Tesla is by no means dependent on subsidies and can operate more independently. Marin says, I am pleased about that. Elon chimes in, it's always been Tesla's view that all subsidies should be eliminated, but that must include the massive subsidies for oil and gas to level the playing field. For some reason, governments don't want to do that. Sad, but true. So that 1.35 billion US dollars that Tesla was set to receive is apparently no more. Tesla will, however, continue to stick to its plans for the battery factory at Giga Berlin, but it will do so without state IPCEI funding. And there's a lot of speculation out there about why this is going on. It's probably not just Tesla's doing it out of the goodness of their heart. There's most definitely a reason. The EU does require any sites in receipt of the funds to be the first industrial deployment of the tech, according to official documents, meaning the batteries cannot already be made at another Tesla plant. However, we've already known this was true back in September when this subsidy was announced, Tesla was at that point already making 4680s at Cato Road in California. So yes, it could be the 4680 situation or really it could be any other thing that could result in more paperwork or delays legal red tape, restrictions, other requirements that Tesla just did not want to have to abide by, so they just said, forget it, we'll do it on our own. But no matter the reason, the fact here is that Tesla is in a position to say no thank you to over a billion dollars and just do it on their own. This is a great thing. And I just thought this was funny. So in my title the other day about this Giga Berlin next potential round of objection discussions, Elon also said seriously. So we're definitely on the same page with that. But that is all for today. Please take a second to like the video if you did. Hope you guys have a wonderful and safe weekend and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.